So everyone can hear us, but they can only see you. Okay. Oh, so Patty goes first. So I'm on. Hello. Um, so this is the the maths uh, 2020 first ever virtual subject expo um, going live through Teams. Hopefully it all goes well. Um, we're going to talk briefly about um, senior pathways into the three math streams that you can choose from um, for VCE. Otherwise, you'll be heading towards the, the VCAL stream, which is a numeracy base that can start from year 10 onward. Um, we've got two of the best of the best Clonard teachers. Oh, the girls were just smiling, thinking I was about to say it was them. No, and we've got two of the best students, um, the creme of the crop, um, of students to um, talk a little bit about sort of their pathways um, with maths um, and where they're, they're looking to go with the maths that they're doing. Um, so I might just quickly share my screen. Um, give me a second. This is going to be clunky. And I will just talk about. And I might just get the go ahead from our presenters. Give me a sec. We've got the number one, uh, Ash Milne, oh, Ben Houston. Oh no, definitely. Look, ben Houston as well. So we've got Ash Milne is uh, one of our further maths teachers and methods teachers. She's a methods extraordinaire. Um, and we've got Benny Houston, who is just a maths whiz, but he teaches our specialist maths um, at year 11 and year 12. And then we've got uh, Sydney Hoy and Yushin, um, both in year 12, um, both maths whizzes. Um, and they're going to be sharing sort of their, their story as well. So I might just get Ben or Ash or one of the girls. Can you let me know? Can you see the screen that I'm yep. sharing? OK. Ben? Yes. You ripper. So um, I firstly want to say um, if you do have any questions that aren't answered in this video, here are all of the maths experts or all of the maths teachers um, for 2020 this year. So your daughter will have um, one of the following teachers. They are your first point of um, contact, I recommend messaging them and they'll get either in contact with myself or one of the uh, methods further or specialist teachers or one of the um, the numeracy teachers if need be. Um, so any of those teachers are brilliant. If your daughter has any questions, they should be asking them as well and they'll be coming to see me. Otherwise, feel free to email any of these teachers as well, whether they're your daughter's teacher or not. Um, You'll find all of this information in the Maths Pathways um, handbook, which can be found on True North as well. So True North, if you're not familiar with that, is a um, sort of a web page directory for all subjects. Um, you'll be sort of instructed to have a look at that for all subjects, but I highly recommend um, having a look at some of the Maths um, avenues. This is a bit of a confusing um, flowchart of maths right from year seven through to our senior year levels um, at year 12. So um, there does need to be some adjustments made up in the senior um, area, but I'll discuss them in a moment. So um, your daughter would have started in a year seven general NLEP um, and possibly advanced, possibly not because advanced has only just um, started at year seven and eight in the last couple of years. And then they've continued either through the general stream, um, if not jumped up into an advanced class at some point or gone um, into a numeracy class. So our numeracy program stops at year nine. Um, if your daughter is in year nine in NLEP or numeracy, they will be um, looking to take year 10 uh, skills numeracy or we call it pre-cal. Um, and that is maths that's um, going to sort of lead you into VCAL numeracy into year 11 and 12, if not into VCE without doing maths, um, any maths whatsoever. So um, if you're going from year 10 into year 11, you can decide to um, drop maths altogether if it is not your thing. However, I highly recommend um, holding on to it just for year 11 and having a go at year 11 general maths. Um, by the way, Ben or Ash, feel free to pipe up. Um, if I'm yeah, I was going to say that mo most people 
do go on to doing BCA maths and the majority of our girls, if they're doing general maths or even if they're doing advanced maths, a lot of our girls go into um, units one and two general maths that then feeds into further maths. And we currently have what, four classes of further maths? We currently have, yeah, four classes. So, and that general and further, it's um, it's quite annoying that they call them both uh, different names. They are the one uh, stream uh, per se into year 12. So this further one too should be a 3-4. Um, it's going to sound lame, but this was an image that I was unable to edit from previous years. Um, this is a, a unit 3-4 subject, uh, which means it's a year 12 level. Um, if you are in a in a year 10 advanced class, you can accelerate into that 12 further um, early if you wish. However, we highly recommend that you do general maths before you go into further. Um, so if you're in the advanced stream, there are quite a few opportunities as you move through. Um, you need to be quite capable moving into our senior years if you're looking to do methods or specialist maths. Um, methods is sort of a, a very higher order thinking maths. You're looking at calculus and probability um, that can be quite um, mathematical and analytical in a math sense. Um, whereas our general maths and further maths is more business based and financial maths based as a core. Um, and our specialist maths is slightly higher order than our methods. Um, you're looking at more complex numbers as well as calculus and probability at quite a high, um, quite a high order um, thinking sort of area there. Um, you sort of need to talk and discuss it. So I really recommend discussing um, if you're looking to go into specialist maths and methods discussing your options and um, getting a bit more information and you'll get a bit more information today from Ash and Ben on what methods is all about and possibly Yushin and um, Sydney. They'll let us know a bit about methods and specialists um, and we can discuss further as well. I think I'm just going to leave it there and jump back to my screen. Where are we? Crikey. There we go, I should be back with a flipped camera. There we go. Um, so that's just a little bit about the pathways. Um, it was very vague, but you'll get uh, more of an, an overview uh, in a few moments when we sort of go through um, some of our teachers. Uh, and students' perspectives. Um, is there anything else, Ash, no, Ben, you'd really like? Good. Yeah. Would it be worth, um, shall we share so that we can have all our faces up on the screen and then if people have got questions, you're welcome to open up that side Q&A bar and just type away. Feel free mm -hmm. to ask any questions that you'd like just as we set this up. I do remember. Anyway, would, uh, oh. Yeah, share your desktop. And I might ask, Ash, do we have any attendees at the moment? Ash, I think you have to make me live. Can you do that? Yeah, you need to click on Ben to be able to. Oh, OK, sorry. There we go. Share the desktop. OK. Can you all see each other? Fabulous. Yep. You can get rid of my yep. second face. <laughs> you can minimise that one. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Wonderful. So we've currently got 11 people on. If, if any of you have questions, you're welcome to type away. Um, shall we ask some of our year 12, though, some questions? Sure. <laughs> yeah, so what, what are you Yushin, studying? Um, well, we might start with you. Yushin, can you tell us what math subjects you're currently doing in Year 12? So right now I'm doing Methods and Stash 34, Year 12, and uh, it's and, pretty fun. And what um, what made you choose two math subjects as opposed to just Methods? Um, well, you kind of have to do Stash to do Methods. <laughs> so um, uh, Methods 
method study is fetch, so that's why I'm doing both of them, but I think they both really lend to each other well if you do do both. Definitely. Yeah. So um, that's it. that is definitely one good highlighting point that um, you should mention about if you're going to do specialist, you have to also do methods, which does mean two subjects in your BCE is is a maths um, subject. So, um, Yushin, are you had you planned on doing maths for um, for any particular reason, whether it's something that you'd had in mind for when you finish school? Um, not really. I kind of just really like maths. It's you know, it's easy to set things out. It's a more direct way of thinking, I think, and it's just, yeah. it's comforting in the craziness of VCE. Yeah, and you'd, you'd come through doing the advanced maths, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Yep, so you'd done advanced maths right from year seven or was it year eight? Uh, that was year nine and ten. Year nine and ten, you've just gone yeah. into the advanced. That's awesome, thanks for sharing that. Um, Sydney, you're, you're doing the same thing, methods and, and specialist. Um, yep. Did you have any different reasons as to why you chose the subjects or what you're planning on doing with having methods and specs in, uh, in your VC repertoire for when you finish school? Um, I guess like you, Shin, I just like maths. <laughs> but um, also when I was trying to decide what VC subjects to do, I was trying, I knew I was going to take methods um, because I come up from year 9 and 10 advanced. Um, but I wasn't sure if I was going to do special or physics. And then I think Doc Nolan must have told me it's better if you do both because they sort of join together. So I was like, well, yeah. so that's yeah, how I ended up in special as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. Very good. I think Sydney even told me, she told me a while ago that she wants to be a maths teacher. Is that still tr true, Sydney? Um, I'm not sure about teacher, but I would like to study maths. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, but um, I think I might end up studying um, yeah, maths or physics at uni because I just think it's fun. Mm. And there's cool. so many careers that methods and specialists lead into. I think if you're, um, I think everyone should definitely be doing a maths in VCE, um, regardless of what university degree you decide to go into, if, if that's what you're um, heading towards after year 12 or whether it's just to have maths on your CV. A lot of um, employers really look for um, people who have got a, at least a year 12 level maths. So I think it is really important regardless of what kind of um, level that you're choosing, whether it is further methods or and spec. Um, but in choosing methods and specialist maths, they really lead into those um, higher level thinking jobs such as law, medicine, um, accounting, other business or science related areas. Um, so they are definitely important if you're thinking of going into a career that requires a higher level of, um, of math understanding for sure. Mm. And don't forget definitely. teaching. And teaching, <laughs> and teaching yeah. You got engineering, engineering is a big one. Yeah. Actuary, and if you don't know what that yeah. is. They're, they're pretty cool. They're, they're actually quite important at the moment in the climate that we've got. Um, so they predict, they sort of guess the probability of risk, I guess, for businesses. Um, but you're right, that, that methods and specialists opens up your, your gateways um, for careers going through university. Um, but we do recommend as well, um, if you're going to go down that avenue, you, you've come from the advanced stream. If you're coming from a general stream, um, at year nine, you'd be looking to, to start 10 advanced maths to then go into year 11 methods or specialist as well um, to then go into year 12. So it's um, from year nine that you sort of need to start looking at, at that avenue. Um, otherwise, you may find it um, maybe a lot of work going from say year 10 general into a year 11 methods um, and specialist sort of avenue. Um, that 11 general and uh, 12 further comes from the general stream, like I said, and that's more your business maths, uh, nursing and midwifery. Um, if you're looking at something like that, um, you can take that stream, um, but you will find that that's also, further maths is also a prerequisite for, for quite a few um, subjects um, 
or, or courses at a university level too. So, yeah. Are there any other things you'd like to say, girls? Um, just that, you know, when you're choosing subjects, make sure you look at a lot of a broad variety of uni courses and make sure that you choose subjects that hit as many prerequisites as you can that you're interested in just, just so you can like, you know, keep all your options open because I think it's really um, important to be able to have a selection rather than shutting doors on yourself when you could have made a choice that's really beneficial for you in the future. So, you know, definitely keep a maths, don't drop maths. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think it's um, another thing to say, uh, our year 11s um, next year, will have an opportunity um, to possibly reduce their load by a subject. Um, and if that's the case, I recommend holding on to maths. As Miss Milne said, um, hold on to it. Um, have, a, have a crack because you never know, you may get to the end of year 11 um, and you may need that subject in year 12. Um, so that's one of those crucial ones, maths and English. Um, yeah, I've just, I've just um, put on our Q&A live event um, a link to Job Outlook. It's a great website if um, if you want to do a quick quiz that just sort of goes through um, some of your strengths uh, and what careers they could possibly lead to. And it gives a great snapshot of what kind of level, if, if you're having to do maths, what sort of level maths you'd really need and whether you know, you might need to do methods and or spec in order to um, get into those uh, tertiary degrees. So definitely check out that website. Um, if you're still a little bit unsure as to what careers you might be interested in and whether they do require maths. Great. Also recommend Gab um, yeah. Marn as well. She is marvellous. Um, she will give you as much information and then some um, around if you require maths for any career avenue and to what extent. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just sort of building on that even like I'm still not sure 100% what I want to do. Um, I just know what I'm interested in. So that's the subjects I picked for my year 12. And um, especially as well with maths, if you know that you enjoy it and you're pretty strong in it, um, I would suggest like aim as high as you feel confident with. For example, if you're in year 10, you're thinking, should I take methods or general? And you think general would be the easier option, but methods would, you not that you might not know that you need methods for a course or anything, but if you change your mind halfway through year 11 and you've already taken general, it's hard. You can't really go into methods, but if you're in methods and you decide this is way too hard, I'm going to drop down to further in year 12. You can always drop down, but you can't pick something up. Yeah, and that's a really, really good point. The yeah. fact that you can start in the method stream in, in year 11 and you can choose at any point, whether it's the end of the first semester in year 11 or the end of the year at year 11, and you can still um, pick up further maths quite easily from there. That's I'm so glad that you mentioned that, Sydney, because there's a lot of girls who, um, you know, they really want to be challenged. They're ready for methods. Um, but they may find halfway through the year or at the end of year 11 that based on all their other subjects that they might need to prioritise or they've now started to really think about um, the sorts of careers that they definitely want to be uh, sort of working towards into year 12. So they decide to drop methods and that's fine. Um, but I definitely agree with what you're saying there, you sh um, Sydney, about the fact that try not to pick the subjects that are just easy. You want to go with subjects that are going to challenge you that you're ready for. Um, and if you're ready for methods, then, then choose it because <laughs> uh, it is it is good and you can opt out at any point um, for sure. I might ask um, Ben Hewson, our specialist teacher, if, um, if a student if one of our girls is doing just methods in year 11 and they're looking to pick up methods and specialists for whatever reason at year 12, um, would you say that they would uh, be able to do that and find it easy to pick up or do you recommend that they um, do year 11 prior? And girls, have you done both year 11 and are now doing year 12 specialist? Yeah, yep. but to be specialist in year 12, they, they really should do specialist in year 11 as well. Yeah. It's, um, it's, it's not impossible to do, year, to do year 12 specialist without year 11 specialist. Um, but there's certain things we cover in year 11 specialist like um, complex numbers and vectors 
which if they if they don't do year eleven specialist, they'll get to year twelve having never seen it before, and it'd be be quite difficult. Um, but I think I think officially, I don't think year eleven specialist is a prerequisite for year twelve methods. But but strangely, year eleven methods is you have to have done year eleven methods to do year twelve specialist. Mm. So, yeah, I, yep. I think there's um schools in Melbourne's as well that doesn't um offer year eleven specialist, and so they like if you want to do special, you have to go straight to your top. So it's not impossible, but it could be it's like, not ideal. It's, no. Yeah. Mm. I guess one of the advantages as well, if you to do, doing year eleven specialist, is we do try and really we we try and start year twelve a little bit early, um as well, and uh, just just to give the the girls a bit of a head start. So. So yeah, um, that's another good reason for doing it. Yeah, but it's not it's not impossible. It's not impossible, particularly if you're you're passionate about maths. What these two girls are. Ash, you were about to answer that question. Oh yeah, we've got a question yeah. about the difference between advanced maths and Year Ten pre methods. Um, I think it's just in the wording in the handbook. Correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Dwyer, but Year Ten advanced and pre methods means the same thing. Um, yep. It just implies that with advanced maths that really leads into doing methods and so that's why you'll find it being called pre-methods sometimes um, what we're trying to really get home like um, send the message home is that if you're in the general stream um, we really don't recommend that you go into year 11 methods um, only because the, there's quite a big jump between year 10 general maths and year 11 methods and there's a lot of content that we cover in the advanced stream in year 10 that is different to what we've covered in year 10 general maths because general really follows into the further math stream whereas for year 10 advanced or pre-methods maths really follows into the methods and specialist stream a great question thank you mm, that is a good one So this silence is a little awkward. Anyone else got questions out there? <laughs> Do we have any more viewers? Ash, how are we going with our viewers? Yeah, we've got 10 people attending at the moment. Okay, um, so bring some questions, guys, your viewers. <laughs> this is what we're here for. And you're welcome to come and go as you, as you need. Is there science on at the moment as well? Till 4.30? So. Uh, we've got VCAL and... The arts and arts, yeah. So arts is quite broad. If you if you're looking into doing arts, please hook into that because um, you've got a lot of different avenues um, in the in the VCE stream or senior stream for arts. So, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Um, ben, do you want to say anything about physics? Yeah, we can uh, give give them a quick rundown in physics. Um, do you want me to do a little presentation? Just a go quick for it. All right, so I'll just I'll just share my uh, my OneNote. Can everybody see see this? Yep. Yep. Okay, so we'll talk a little about relevant careers in physics. This is the. Have you guys seen this diagram before? Yes. This is this is the classic careers diagram. Um, level level one is um, Cert one and two level. Level two is. Cert three and four. This, this this is TAFE course level. Level three is diploma level, and level level four is bachelor degree level or higher. So physics is relevant all the way down to Cert one and two. Um, you could be a petroleum or gas plant operator, a broadcasting technician, sound technician. Physics is um, relevant to a lot of these fields. Um, Cert three and four. Uh, we've got more sort of technical. Um, courses. Um, a lot of electricians study physics. Surprisingly, these days, you'd be you'd be a lot of people would be surprised to know that that, that most people who are going to, to become electricians these days have, have done their VCE. So they could, they have got a bit of maths and they've got a bit of physics behind them. So it's quite very relevant for electricians. Um, and yeah, a variety of different technicians. Um, bumping up to level three, we've got some more highly um, qualified technicians, engineering surveyors, um, cartographers, uh, yeah, people who work in the naval industry, and then right on the outside, we've got all the university areas, 
uh, geophysicists and, and all the engineering degrees, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering, mining engineering, electrical engineering. Um, physics is re very relevant to computer science um, and it's uh, it's relevant to, to uh, some medical fields, uh, uh, radiation therapists, uh, telecommunications engineers, biomedical engineers, biophysicists. So yeah, there's a, there's a very um, surprisingly wide range of application for physics in the real world. And just to give everyone a bit of a snapshot of the sort of things we study in unit one and two, which is year 11, um, we look at uh, how how can thermal effects be explained. We look at the laws of thermodynamics, and we look at how they apply to to global warming and climate change. Uh, we look at electrical circuits and um, electric how electrical power supply works in the home, and then we look at nuclear physics, um, which is and look we look at how matter is formed in the early in the early um, universe. We also look at motion and um, forces and um, velocity and and uh, Newton's laws and all that stuff. Uh, we also look at um, we do we do an option in year eleven. We're going to do an option this year about how musical instruments work, and we also do a an extensive practical investigation in year eleven, um, which takes usually takes about a month to do. It's a it's a fairly involved project. In year 12, we um, we study motion further. We look at circular motion and uh, the motion of satellites. We look at um, electrical motors and electrical generators, as well as um, how transformers work in the power supply system. Uh, we study um, Einstein's theory of relativity and how that relates to Newton's laws. We also study light and waves and, and, and how light can be described as a wave. We also look at um, how how light can be described as particles of matter as well, and in fact, how matter can be described as a wave, which would be a surprise to a lot of people. Um, we are actually all waves, technically, as well as matter. And of course, in Year Twelve, we we also do a very involved practical investigation, which usually takes about four weeks. Okay, so that's about it, guys. Awesome. We had a question here about um, is it bad if you want to keep with the general um, maths part, uh, sorry, the general path for maths? Um, and I've just uh, replied to the, the comment there about that most of our girls do uh, move through the general maths stream, which then heads into further mathematics. Um, definitely worth looking at what sort of careers you're hoping to get into after school. Um, because that will then determine whether you really should be aiming for um, further methods and even specialist maths. Um, but I've commented just to say that we, uh, for, for most of our girls, they'll go into further maths, um, whereas fewer of our girls will do methods and specialist. And they're really the girls that are going into those, um, hopefully those university degrees such as um, engineering, medicine, law, um, accounting, any of those uh, sorts of university degrees. So definitely check out um, whether your university course requires you to have methods. Most of them will just have that you have to have a maths, which for most people they'll they'll choose further maths for. Um, but definitely check it out on the university books. There's um, a couple of other questions that have come through um, relating to that further methods. I'm taking it. Um, there's a question that says, if you do further next year, would you move on to methods for year 12? So if you're in year 10, let's say, uh, looking to accelerate, um, let's say you're doing 10 advanced and you're looking to accelerate into year 12 further in year 11, so to be your accelerated subject, um, you can do year 12 further maths in year 11 and then in year 12 do methods. However, you'd have to do methods as well in year 11. So you'd be doing both year 12 further and year 11 methods at the same time. You'd have to be able to juggle that. Yeah, um, in order to do units three and four methods, you have to have done units one and two. two. It's a prerequisite. The two yeah. the two different maths um, are very, very different topics. So there's no sort of overlap in the content being covered. 
Yep. Um, there's a question there that says, um, what's the difference between methods and specialist maths? And I think that's probably a pretty important distinction that people need um, yeah. to yeah. know. Definitely. They're both, um, they're, both very, they're both very challenging subjects. Um, uh, particularly, the, the the methods exam is like quite famous for being quite difficult. Yeah. Don't tell them that. Don't tell them that. It's fine. <laughs> it's, fine. it's easy uh, when you go through Quinard maths. You sweat. Ah, uh, methods is a prerequisite for a lot more subjects. Um, um, specialist isn't really a prerequisite for many subjects, but if you're looking to to study something that involves advanced maths, like particularly engineering, um, medicine. If you want to be like a financial modeler or something like that, um, yeah, specialist is very, very beneficial. Like a lot of the stuff we do in specialist really is first year university maths. Like it's um, if you can if you can handle specialist, you know, you you're gonna it's gonna give you a, a big leg up at university. That's really that's really what it's all about. But yeah, specialist isn't you don't need to do it. Like it's not a prerequisite for anything. But if you want to study maths university will definitely help you um and yeah don't forget about maths teaching either like if you want to be a math teacher it's very it's a very good thing to do so um yeah that, that really is the main difference like a lot more a lot more students do study methods and specialists like generally in specialists you've really only got like this year we've got six students studying specialist maths how many are doing methods guys yeah 13 of us uh, yeah, 13 so and we've got two classes in year 11, which is um, the most that we've had at Clonna, which is awesome. So more of our girls are picking science in VCE and um, and maths in VCE, so that's really good. Yep, and our class numbers tend to be smaller um, due to the nature, but that means you're getting more one-on-one um, -on -one teaching, yeah. which is really beneficial. Um, would you say also that that whole complex number um factor and when you when you get into vectors and everything is a, a big difference between methods and specialists and if you're not sure what they are well that's the difference and, and <laughs> that's the, probably says you shouldn't be doing yeah I mean, there are like a lot um, of stuff in, in specialists it really is for the math purist you know stuff like complex numbers and yeah yeah vectors and and then with calculus as well we do take it a fair bit further um we do yeah. things like Differential equations. Um, we do we do a lot of different. We do more integration techniques. Um, we do things like implicit differentiation. Um, yeah, we we look at parametric equations and things like that. So there is there is a fair bit fair bit more that we do. Um, one thing one thing about specialists though is that even though it is it is a bit harder with the, the course content, the exams aren't. Aren't, uh, often considered not to be as hard as methods, surprisingly, because um, yeah, in, in methods they generally like to really challenge the students <laughs> um, to to spread them out. But um, in specialists, often the exams are a bit more routine. So um, I think that's not to say don't pick methods or specialists. <laughs> I mean, the 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 year twelve exams, yeah, they might be um, quite challenging. But in saying that, if if you have been going through the advanced stream, I've just got a question here from someone saying, is methods hard and where would you go into it? Um, if you are in the advanced class currently, uh, if you're in year nine advanced maths, um, I'd be recommending that you keep going through the advanced stream and then in year 11 is when you begin methods. We do have some girls who have accelerated into methods early, so they're doing year 11 methods in year 10. Um, that is not something that we highly recommend. Um, we've only got, I think, three girls doing this and um, it's not that they're not doing well. I think some of them are a little bit surprised as to the workload that's involved um, because methods does require a lot of you. You need to be independent and you need to be willing to work hard. Um, but in saying that, uh, for most girls, if you're doing advanced maths, I would highly recommend that you jump into methods, give it a good go. And just like Sydney was saying before, you can always opt out, whether it's the middle of year 11 or the end of year 11, if you do happen to find it too challenging. You're at more of a gain, really. Um, if you stick with it in year 11, you are at a far more uh, beneficial gain than you would be to drop it and just stick to general, um, if you're quite capable. Um, so stick to it, challenge yourself. There is nothing wrong with that. 
in that year 11 year. Um, that's a good one. There was another the science question. It was electives. Does anyone know the answer to that? No, I don't. No sorry. idea. <laughs> um, I take it you have to choose them. Um, uh, yeah, I think you have to choose science? one science elective. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there was another one about accelerating. Can you do units one and two physics in year 10? You certainly can. Um, we do need, um, I'll be straight up, say we do need the numbers of students to be able to run it. Um, you, you need to be quite capable. I'm going to say Ben would probably say you need to be quite capable because there are some maths applications in there and you need to sort of have um, a bit of independence about you and a bit of um, uh, a bit in, interpersonal motivation to be able to push yourself. I yeah, think. It's, it's, it's not out of the question. Like if um, yeah, if, if someone in year nine wants to, wants to wants to jump year ten, we are we are running a year ten physics subject next year though. So like a specialist physics subject, which is which is different. It's a change from previous years. So so students can it's going to be a semester elective, I think. So mm. I mean, I'd recommend you do year ten. We're going to be we're going to be doing a lot of um, we're going to be one of the units we're studying at year 10 will be we'll be looking at the universe and um, a lot of space physics so that, that should be fun um, blowing holes in the universe Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yeah look at looking at uh, the chance of life on other planets and things like that and and uh, so that's an exciting new subject for next year but um, yeah certainly in physics it, it is possible to accelerate but yeah you'd, you'd want to be very very competent at your, at your maths in particular um, you want, you'd want to be um, pretty good at algebra to accelerate because a lot of the a lot of the algebra we do in year 11 physics you, the students learn in year 10 in year 10 general so so yeah it's uh on, on the topic of accelerating um if you are tuned in there there is no need to rush necessarily with all of your subjects um you're not at a loss if you do not accelerate you're not at a loss at all you still get the same outcome that you would if you didn't accelerate. I mean, you do have an opportunity of adding a sixth subject to your um, to your repertoire at the end of year 12, which will give you um, a little bit of a booster in your marks if you do really well. Um, that's, that's the only thing is if you do really well, you'll benefit from it. However, there is no real need to accelerate. Um, if you are quite competent though and um, you're looking to do quite a broad range of subjects because you are competent and maybe you do know what you want to do outside of school and you've sort of looked at engineering or accounting or whatever it is and you want to sort of taste a fair few more subjects then I recommend it um, but if you're doing it to say reduce the number of subjects you're doing at year 12 and you're not necessarily feeling or you're not necessarily the most competent uh, or motivated. You, need, you really need motivation if you're coming from year nine into year 10 and accelerating or, or year 10 into year 11. You really need to be motivated in yourself to do a year 12 subject and do well at it to, to really benefit from doing that accelerated subject. So, yeah, on a, on a broad sense, I recommend just doing what you're doing um, and sticking to it. Yeah, I know um, Sydney and I both accelerated into a year 12 subject, one subject, so, um, one subject only, but yeah. Um, yeah. we didn't, um, I think both of us thought better than to, rather, we didn't accelerate into a maths or science because I think the general stream that you follow along from year 7 to 10, it really builds upon each other to support you in BC science, so it's probably better, and maths, so it's probably better um, to stick with that and follow it along because that will really actually benefit you um, in the long run with um, your methods and your special year further because um, you're not trying to jump ahead of your year level and learn two sets of content at one time. So um, if you're going to accelerate in a maths or a science, go you, good luck. Um, I believe in you, but um, yeah, I think uh, if you're going to accelerate, then you got to really think hard about it and your capabilities and your motivation. So. Girls, what subjects did you accelerate in? It was further maths? 
Oh, we didn't <laughs> tell you that. Um, right. I what took Indonesian second language. Oh, Ripa, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I took um, legal studies. So oh, cool. very different from maths. <laughs> yeah, what, what um, from, a, from a broad perspective, because we're, we're still talking about maths and physics, but from a broad perspective speaking, what was it like going into year 11, doing a year 12 subject for the first time, not experiencing necessarily VCA at all? What was that like? I was really happy. Happy, to yeah. Accelerate because I just wanted to sort of like, you know, sit my first exam, do all the sacks, have like know what it feels like and know that when I sit the exam, I'm not going to screw it up. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, now I know that I think I can do it for the rest of my subjects. <laughs> like I have yeah. a better sense of how it works. Um, yeah. That's it. I think that's the big advantage um, apart from being able to take a sixth subject and get um, if you're really wanting to do well. Um, but aside from that, um, just knowing what what year 12 actually is like yeah. um, and all the SACs, all the outcomes, how the whole structure of a course works. I think that yeah. was good. Obviously, it's different for every course, but yeah, it was good. And it's always um, good to have someone to do it with you. I know um, I had two other friends who accelerated into legal with me and we've gotten really close and it's really because it's I, it'd be really daunting to go into a year 12 class where you're the only year 11. Like that's kind of scary. And I know um, Saskia Frake, college captain, um, she was in legal. She accelerated into year 11 legal with us and then she changed into year 12 global politics. And um, whilst she was alone as a year 11, she did um, make friends within that year 12 class who were really welcoming. And we are that we aren't scary. So like, you know, if you do accelerate into year 12, they will generally accept you. And, you know, it does really help to have people um, in the year above you because they can share their resources for when you move into that subject and you're much more confident to approach them for um, any advice from their perspective as well. So it's really useful to be able to make connections or friends outside of your year level to um, help your own learning as well. Cool. Thanks. No, it's good. It's good to get your, your perspective because um, it is. I, I think it would be quite daunting to do a year 12 subject, um, moving from year 10 into year 11. Um, did you find you had to be quite motivated to putting time into those subjects as well as your year 11 ones, particularly maths? Like if you're looking to accelerate into another subject like you girls did, did you find you still had to put a fair bit of time into your maths as well yeah, to then yes. do it in year 12? Yeah. yeah. But because I like maths, it's not a problem. Yeah. yeah, that's that's what I do <laughs> when I'm sick of all my other work. Yeah. Yeah. But it's definitely a lot to get through all the book work because there's instances where you're getting through the book work because it's what's set out for you to do. And then there's instances where you're getting through the book work where you're not understanding it. So you need to do more practice questions in order to understand it. And so, you know, it can be time consuming, but it's um, definitely always going to be worth it because you know, in maths, the more practice you do, the better you become, the more refined your skills are and the easier they are to apply to other situations. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we've got a question here, Ash. Were you going to answer that? Would you like to answer it? Oh, I, I don't mind. Um, this is something that's come come in fairly recently. So when Yushin and Sydney were in year 10, I don't think this would have been available to you guys. Um, but something new that has been allowed at Clonard in terms of acceleration is if you're currently in year nine, um, doing year nine advanced maths, um, there is the option to accelerate when you're in year 10 to do year 12 further maths, as well as doing year 10 advanced maths. So it means that you'll be doing two maths for the whole year. Um, you have to do year 10 advanced maths to then get into methods, um, but the year 12 further maths means that you have one year 12 subject out of the way um, by the end of year 10. It isn't something that um, you can really volunteer yourself into. Um, it is something that um, would be recommended from your teacher. So it's sort of like an invite only. Is that sort of right, Mr. Dwyer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you may be able to apply, but uh, it's highly that recommended. That you're going to be accepted necessarily. Yeah, no. It is a pretty big leap. It's um, certainly doable. We've had um, last year we had five girls um, accelerate into further maths and they all did a fabulous job. In fact, they all received 
the, probably the top scores um, in comparison to the other year 12s at, at cohort, one of which got a study score in the 40s um, and she did a really fabulous job, but in saying that she was also very independent when she was in year nine. Um, a lot of these girls have an average uh, test rate of around 95%. Um, this girl that got into the 40s, I think she barely dropped a mark when I taught her in year nine. So um, we're really looking for girls that are not only um, quite strong with their maths, um, but also showing uh, a lot of independence because it's it's dawning being in an older year level um, being in a year 12 subject as a year 10 student um, and the workload is also going to be more than than what you would expect at a year 10 level too. Especially coming from a year nine level. So if you, you, you got to think you are coming from year nine into year 10. Uh, sorry, from year nine into year 12. You're, you're jumping two years worth of a workload uh, home workload, study routine. It's a big leap. Um, so it is, but it isn't invite only. Um, you, you'll be recommended by a teacher. Um, if you are interested though, it is a discussion to have. Highly recommend you come and source uh, myself, uh, Miss Milne, um, and your teacher, even Mr. Houston as well. Um, speak to the girls at that level. Um, but you really need to come and have a chat to us um, so we can see where you're at and if it would be um, suitable for you to do. Otherwise, um, there'd be no harm in, in applying for Year 11 general, getting that background knowledge as well. Um, we're talking about two different types of maths. Um, uh, further is seen as easier, but it's a different style um, of maths compared to your methods and your specialist. It's, it's more um, statistical, analytical, um sort of maths uh, compared to your maths maths dare i say it. there's more words in, in in further i'm trying to sort of discuss it in in uh in sort of lay, layman terms um yeah it is different yeah. And, it, and it is probably harder to get a better like if you're going to talk numbers it is harder to get a high study score in further maths just because you, your, the amount of people that are doing the subject is a lot higher than methods and specialists, so you've got a lot more competition. You've also got um, some schools that sort of force particular students to do the subject so that they look good. Probably shouldn't say that, but um, some schools like to play games and so they get their top students to complete the subject, which also then makes it really challenging to be getting study scores in the 40s. So, Basically, as soon as you lose a, a mark in the exam, your study score drops quite substantially. Um, whereas in methods and spec, um, yes, the content is a lot harder, but the end study results also get scaled up. Whereas further maths, they get scaled down. So uh, I, I hope that you wouldn't pick the subject based on what you're more likely to get a better study score resulting, because that's not the point of doing VCE. You need to choose it based on the skills that you want to get, um, but something to be aware of anyway. Yeah. And especially with study scores and all that, if you're going to choose a subject because it gets scaled up, that you're really like not the strongest <laughs> in it, it's not going to benefit you. Yeah, you might as well just take something that you enjoy and you know you're going to do well and even if it gets scaled down one or two, because the higher you score, the less it'll scale anyway. Yeah. So. Do what you like, folks. You want to be able to enjoy maths. that last. Yeah, you want to be you yeah. want to be able to enjoy those last years as well. You don't want to make it. It's going to be stressful, mm -hmm. but you don't want to make it even more um, labor intensive yeah. and, and stressful um, on top of um, what it can be. You want to make it enjoyable as well. So do we recommend it? No, unless we tap you on the shoulder. In short, yeah. Do we have anyone else out there? Any other questions? I'm just thinking about this year 10 advanced maths and further maths. Um, it, like, it doesn't hurt to ask your teachers what they think you're capable of because they see all your assessments and all your class work and how you contribute to class discussions and things. Um, they know what you can do. Like I remember in year nine, um, I had no idea what I was going to do in year 10 or 11 or 12. And Miss Rhodes, who was my advanced maths teacher, said um, she sat us down for one lesson and just talked about what streams of maths you do a bit like this right now. Um, and she said, so there's general, 
methods spec. All of you in advance maths are probably looking at going into methods. Um, and I said, I went home and I said to my mum, do you think I can do specialist? And she was like, I don't know. I'm not your teacher. How would I know how hard it is? So I asked Miss Rhodes and Miss Rhodes said, oh yeah, that's fine. So that's <laughs> how I ended up in specialist maths. Yeah. Okay. Your teachers are definitely a really good resource to go to. They know you and your learning like very well and you know they see you almost every day or used to see you almost every day. So um, definitely make use of your teachers. They're really supportive and you're definitely going to be relying on them a lot in VC as well. So it's always good to build a relationship, a good relationship with your teachers because they're always there to support you. They're always looking out for your best. Um, interests and your best results, no matter what they are, you know, they're, they're there for you. So, you know. And all of them studied work. math. So when you say, <laughs> what do I do with a math degree? They can tell you. It's, it's good points, girls. It's a, it's another thing as well. Um, if you're coming from year nine, um, you may not feel that comfortable or confident as a student to approach a teacher by yourself, either in class or outside of class. Um, and that's something you need to be very comfortable with and, and confident in doing when you're doing a year 12 subject. So you, you need to have that confidence and, and comfort in yourself to be able to approach your teacher if you need help um, or, just, or just for any matter really, if you're at that year 12 uh, level. Yeah, and that goes for any subject, not just maths. Cool. What? I feel like saying, Miss Milne, high five. Yes. This is how teachers not understanding. There you go. Pieces. How's your spatial awareness? <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, isn't it? Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. This is how we should have um, taken our class photo and stash so we could all see each other. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Tried to take a class for and special, but it didn't work because we all got confused. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, wow. I've got a couple of screenshots. Yeah. Uh, put them up on Microsoft Teams. <laughs> yes. That's so sweet. Someone said, um, not a question, but thanks to you guys. Thanks to us. Go math. We do such a good job. Go I'm glad this was able to be of some help. It's really hard to know, you know, what what's happening on the other end and whether any of this information is worthwhile. So thank you so much. This is our first one of these sorts of live events. So um, I've just gotten a whole lot of texts from leadership going, is it working? Is it going okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm really glad that that this has been helpful to to you guys and that you know sort of at least avenues of where you can go if you if you've got questions. But we still have seven minutes. <laughs> Wonder whether we'll get any more. <laughs> so all the questions have stopped now, have they? Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. I will say Just though that um, too, like even if you're not comfortable speaking to your teacher in person, um, seeing as uh, year nine and ten students won't be back until June, it would might even be worth sending a, a message to your teacher if you do want to just have a quick. Um, chat about whether accelerating might be worthwhile or not. And when's when's a science meeting? Do you know, Mr. Doyle? That'll be happening sometime this week. Usually, girls that are you know thinking about accelerating maths are, are probably also quite science inclined as well. So thinking about accelerating perhaps into biology is pretty um pretty common. Another Mr. science. Mr. Doyle, you're on mute. So I think the big science, big science night is on Wednesday. So going off um, what Miss Milne or what Ash was saying, um, were you saying, because I couldn't hear, my audio and mic just decided not to work. I think I almost lost my computer um, to it going flat. All good. Um, were you saying about accelerating or, or looking at doing maths and science together? Oh, just saying that a lot of the girls who are thinking of accelerating, if they quite like maths, they probably also quite like science. So usually the way that they end up going is is generally accelerating into a science subject. Probably not so much physics or chem. That's very, very unusual. Definitely probably don't recommend them. Um, but biology is, is a pretty common one to accelerate into. Um, and you've got but Enviro as well. 
Sorry. Oh uh, yeah. Bio and Enviro. So Enviro is a bit of a flavour of the environmental science of the times. And, yeah. And Sorry a psychology. Off. That's questionable, Sydney. Is that <laughs> not a real science? Is that what yeah. you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure they're talking about psychology in the arts. Um, in the arts webinar. <laughs> Oh, okay. never that's what they call a Bachelor of Arts, Psychology. Exactly, so it's not a science. That's crazy. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, mm. moving that aside. I can say if there is anyone tuned in tomorrow night, you've got Humanities, Health PE and Technology, which is Food Studies. But your Health PE is another accelerated one as well. Um, a lot of girls do like to accelerate into your health and human development um, or, or PE as well. So, yeah, look into what it. What did Hopefully, you do, Mr Dwyer, when you're in VCE? What did I do? I ended up, I actually accelerated, um, I shouldn't say by default, but it was by default into geography, oh, um, yeah. which was an experience. <laughs> Whether it was good or bad, I'll leave that up to you. But it was an experience. <laughs> I I actually thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, but it was an experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I did a bit of specialist maths in year eleven, and then I got bored. Plus, I had the students in my class made the class, and they sort of didn't make it. <laughs> so they sort of ruined the class. If that makes sense. Um, I then did methods and further, hmm. maths wise, and loved it. Mm. Loved it. Mm. Yeah. And maths at uni is cool. Maths at uni is is awesome. Is is yeah. really awesome. When yeah. Mr. Houston said that if when you're doing special maths, you're basically doing first year uni maths. I was like, Sydney, we're getting yeah. ahead of the curve. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, there's so many schools that don't offer specialist maths at all. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. you're right, like the first year of uni. And it, it's funny because they they, I don't know, the university, I, the degree that I went into only had methods as a prerequisite, but basically if you didn't do specialist, I don't think you'd last more than a couple of weeks just based on the amount of stuff that they fly through. <laughs> yeah, Maths 101, all your expect knowledge is yep. VCE, Maths, Methods and Special. Yeah. But your number theory is is a highlight, or was a highlight for me at uni, number theory. Why numbers are numbers. <laughs> Like what makes an even number even? What makes an odd number odd? Mm. Yeah, cool stuff. And maybe the other thing to look out for, I'm just thinking of those, um, you know, when you're looking at university degrees, how they've got required subjects versus recommended subjects. If you can hit the recommended subjects, you're going to be way ahead of, um, of a, a lot of the other students that come in. So even if they, like a lot of the time, they'll have chemistry and methods as a recommended subject in a lot of science degrees. Um, but honestly, if you haven't done either of those two subjects, you'll, you'll probably really struggle um, if you haven't done them in VCE. <laughs> so definitely look to the recommended list as well as, as the required list for when you're looking at, um, at tertiary degrees. Ms. Milne, what else did you study except the three maths? Well, I did seven subjects because I was a little bit of a nerd at school. <laughs> um, I, I, I accelerated into methods and biology in year 10, which I don't know, I, I kind of regret accelerating into two subjects. I think as a year 10 student, I didn't really understand uh, the amount of workload that that would involve. Um, and when I went through VCE, they went, we went offered year 11 specialists. So I did, yeah, I did three, four methods in year 11. And then in year 12, I did further in spec. Um, and then I did chem, PE, biology, English. I mean, is that? It's been a while. It's been a really long while. I feel like it's been like 12 years since I was at seven. That was seven. Yeah, that's seven, is it? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really, really helpful for the tertiary degree that I was, I was hoping to get into. Definitely looked at the recommended list on um, different university courses because I was sort of tossing up between doing physiotherapy or um, teaching. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely worthwhile checking out those, um, those lists. Mm. And that's okay. probably it. We've hit 4.30. So I think um, 
to our three attendees who are still um, on our live feed. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and I hope that this session's been helpful to you. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to say before we end? If you've got any questions, ask us. Look at True North, look at the handbook, go to your teacher, go to your maths teacher. Um, please ask as many questions if you are not sure before you put any subject selections in and you start next year um, into whatever year level you're going into, 10, 11 or 12. So ask questions. A stupid question is one that's not asked. Yeah. The worst the worst um, choice you can made, make is an uninformed decision. So, you know, get, get all your information. That's right. Good day. Fantastic. Oh, thanks very much for joining us. We'll see you later. Thank you guys. Bye. <laughs>